Well, all all right. Right. Welcome back to As It Should Be, Paul Bertolino here in the world famous As It Should Be studios. And, uh, come on, like you didn't know, Crystal Durant hi. is also here. Hi, I'm here. As I'm is Tommy here. Von Voigt. As is Tommy Von Voigt. He's there. We're all here. We're in the all world here. Gang's all here. The gang's all here. Wait, is it us, or is, have we just gone with digital avatars now? I, you know, I, I, well, I thought, how do we, all the money we're making hand and fist, this hand over hand fist, fist this thing, how yeah. do we continue that into our old age? Digital Ava- avatars. Avatars yeah. is avatars. the way to go. That's really the future this, of as it should be. Is. You guys then yeah. won't have to travel down here by train from Harlem. Mm. Mm-mm. And yeah, it'll be so wow. much easier. Plus, we can do all the stunts you guys have come to expect <laughs> on this show. All right. the stunts. <laughs> like like managing to have full lists for 1998. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Now that, ah, was that was quite the stunt. Mm. Yes. Happy New Year. Yeah. And okay, that's, yeah. So New we're Year. discussing our favorite albums of 1998. Yeah. And uh, well, who's, who's on first? What's on second? I don't know. Berlino's on, on. Right here. Yeah. All right. Right here. Me. 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 Okay. All right. Tell us about <clears> that. I'm also clearing my throat. <clears throat> I'm sure you love the sound of that. I might yep. have to cut it out, or at least bring the volume down. All right. Um, I uh, am wrong. You start first. <laughs> I didn't have my glasses on. Oh, Surprise. I was hey. wrong. Hey, all right. I'm ready. All right. It's 1998. Don't be late. <laughs> Is it all that great? No. It's not so great. Tommy, he does hate. <clears throat> Tommy ha- really hates. <clears throat> All right, so I got a couple of fun facts from 1998, if you can remember back this far. And if anything was fun in 98. Yeah, well, uh, whatever, uh, sort of. So Interscope Records paid a radio station in Portland, Oregon, $5,000 to play the Limp Biscuit single Counterfeit 50 times. <laughs> well, that would explain that, because that couldn't possibly have been an organic <laughs> what? What? Thing. what? Interscope? Really? Weird Al Yankovic got LASIK eye surgery, shaved off his mustache, and grew his hair long. Changed his look, made him even hotter than he was before. <laughs> I'd fuck that guy in a minute. Oh, he's so you fucking would. hot. Yeah. He's a dork. He's a musician. He's genius. I love well, him. Well, you, you know, actually, no, but you're, since since he changed his look, he, he got took off his glasses and his mustache, and you see him in interviews. Like, I never thought about it, but when I see him speaking in interviews, like, oh, he is kind of good looking. Yeah, he? he is. I never thought dude. so before. You yeah, know? he's cute. He's you know? cute. Uh, number three, Rob Halford came out of the closet in an MTV interview. Because no one knew. Because nobody had any nobody idea had any clue that he was a leather daddy. No, not at all. Not at all. Ugh. Nah. The whole world Didn't was see that blind. Coming from yeah. On a million motorcycles from a mile away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number four, Dave Navarro got fired by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Can you believe that? Yeah, it's crazy. He should have fucking fired them. <laughs> he should have fired. Them. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Frank, I don't remember frankly, how Mr. long Shankly. he was in it, but they, they canned him. They needed to get rid of him because they had a very important record to make called Californication. <laughs> oh, oh. The, the, yeah. yeah, yeah. They needed to make another record where they discuss yes. the fact that they're from California. Because nobody knows that. <laughs> and then I only have two words for the last fun fact, and that is share. Believe. Oh, that's, that's right. Oh no. Yeah. yeah. I do not believe. <laughs> In life after love, I think you do. All right. I have two runners up. How? Two. (laughs) How do you even have two? Only two. Can you believe that? Only two. And the first one is Aquamani by Outkast. Oh. Yes. I love that. I, I love that record. This must be a strong year for you. For you, if you have that, it's merely a runner-up. Yeah. Seriously, yeah, yeah, I'm actually kind of surprised here. And then my other runner-up is Never Say Never by Brandy. Remember that? Brandy? No, we do. You I remember used, that? I used to, I used to have the Brandy doll. I don't think I have it anymore. I think I sold it on eBay a few years ago. But I used to have a Brandy In doll, doll? <laughs> action figure doll. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So here's my list. List. Ooh. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> First episode right out of the cannon. All right. My number 10 is Celebrity Skin by Hole. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's you just officially I'll, I'll altered my worst of list. I forgot. Right I forgot. I, I just remember an album I forgot. I got uh, list. Well, then make a note of it during the commercial. Um, yeah, Celebrity Skin. It was the follow up to the album that I really love, which is Live Through This, which is the best thing that Kurt Cobain ever did. And the lead single off of this album was written by Billy Corgan. But uh, credit was given to Courtney. Uh, she may have done some of the lyrics or whatever. Yeah, she put she dotted I's and I's and cross T's. T's but the most. whole riff 
and everything, that was all Billy Corgan. She went, hey, Billy, shouldn't there be a the right there? That's, yeah. that's what she fucking I mean, they were did. fucking each other at the time. Whatever. All right, my number nine is Forever With You by Phyllis Hyman. Anybody remember Phyllis I, Hyman? I remember the name, but I don't know the stuff at all. So Phyllis Hyman was, she's no longer with us. She's uh, committed suicide a very long time ago. Very oh. sad. Uh, she was the consummate R&B jazz singer. Um, beautiful, low tone, uh, deep voice like mine, but a little bit deeper. And just beautiful 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 voice like Isabel Sanford <laughs> kind of yeah but well, not, maybe not, without the not gravel. so much grit yeah. yeah no gravel but uh, incredible singer and this album it's, it was a really great hybrid between jazz and R&B and uh, it was released three years after she died oh and, was it, um, is that her only album no 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 she uh, like but five, but, uh, but it was but, but something was, was it something she recorded, it was while, recorded she was while she was alive she died before it had a chance to yeah, come out yeah and then they put it out yes. Posth- posthumously it's posth- it became Posth- posthumous became but posthumous. she actually put her own approval stamp yes. on okay. it so. yes 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 it yeah. was supposed to come out and then she died and then they sat around and then they put it out right. so uh, Kenny Gamble Michael Narada uh, Walden uh, produced it the majority of it and also there were songs that she recorded between 1985 and 1995, so they had been sitting around for a while, and then they put this thing together and put it out, and it's really, really, really good. She's beautiful, smoky tone. She's Phyllis Hyman was amazing. She's underrated, woefully underrated. I feel she was like a modern day Nancy Wilson. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, like that. Oh yeah, now, yeah. You See, know, I, I I'm very pissed off that when you said that, I pictured fucking Nancy Wilson from Heart, and that oh, is wrong. Oh Jesus, that is wrong. <laughs> Well, that's racist. Well, it's also also (laughs) weird because I'm more of a fan of the real Real Nancy Nancy Wilson. Wilson, Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So check that record out. At number eight, I have "Hello Nasty" by the Beastie Boys, Ah. which is a good record. I really like that record. It's good. It's good. It's good. Especially Um, by '98 standards. Yes. Yeah. I don't have to tell you what's on it. You already know. Then number seven, I have "Embrya" by Maxwell, which is his follow-up to "Urban Hang Suite." More beautiful. More Beautiful Singing by Maxwell. R&B, a little hip-hoppy, a little quiet stormy. It's great. I dig it. Number five, I have Angels with Dirty Faces by Tricky. Oh, shit. More Tricky. Trip-hop. I like it. And that's the only trip-hop that I like is Tricky stuff. The other stuff, not so great. But Tricky, he was good. You know what? I only even know the name because I used to have a roommate who liked Tricky and would bring him up. But I've never even... I, I probably never heard it. Heard it? Okay. Well, I may have heard of it emanating from his bedroom, but you know. <laughs> yeah, you might have, but... Yeah, to know it, I don't expect you to know it. To know it is not to love it. Tommy? <laughs> Nothing? Okay. Then number four, I have Ray of Light by Madonna. <laughs> Thumbs down, Tommy? Uh. Why? That is when she officially lost me. To electronic for you? It wasn't before yeah. that? No. I stopped paying attention before that. Oh. <laughs> and all of a sudden, that ray of light shit came out, and I was like, Ooh, oh, the no. shade. Oh, now, now I'm actively avoiding Now I actively, okay. yeah. Okay, well, <laughs> you're wrong to do that, because, as usual, Madonna being a person who needs to be relevant at all times, in this record, she kind of saw the future. Well, not kind of. She saw the future coming, and that was... Electronica music. And she picked Miraway as the main producer for this record. And it's a lot of bleeps and blorps and squeaks and squonks, that kind of deal. Um, Ray of Light, I think, is a really great song. I love that song. And if you listen to this record, you'll understand what I'm talking about. It's all synths all the time. Which I would think Tommy would kind of like. All the synths all kind the time. Of kind of Electronica. Yeah, sounds like this was made for me. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Sounds like this was made for me. Oh, forget it. All right. <laughs> My number three. <laughs> You've lost the room. I've lost the room. Uh, come back. <laughs> well, I, you know, the, 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 those folks yeah, out there. Yeah, you're with me, right? Yeah. Loyal fans. Yeah. I love it. Okay. My number three is Push the Button by Money Mark. You like Money Mark? You like I, Money Mark. No, I, you know. Yeah. I, I've only had him on my list already. 18 times, yeah. <laughs> Tommy? Yeah. Have you, have you listened to the Money Mark albums? No. I know you're a Beasties fan. No, haven't. You should listen to I mean, to you know, I'm not, I'm not calling you out or anything. I just... No, haven't listened to them. Th- those albums aren't exactly, you know, 
at the forefront of any you know sets yeah. of albums that you might want to think about listening to. So. But check to check, 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 and check it out. Nah. All right. Yeah. Well, you, dear watchers, viewers, listeners, you check it out. And then come back and tell Tommy how good it is uh, <laughs> in the comments. My number two is Black Star, their uh, self-titled album, their debut. Oh, I was like, that, I'm like, Black Star didn't come out. The, oh, the, the other Black Star. The other Black Star. The other Black Star that has, uh, what's he call himself, Yaslin Bay now. And um, I've talked about Black Star before. Uh, and the LP is named after the uh, shipping company by that was uh, founded by Marcus Garvey. If you don't know how, who Marcus Garvey is, I don't have time to explain that. Just look it up. So it's Mos Def and Talib Kweli. And it is beautiful. Hip-hop, progressive, Brooklyn-centric, very blackety black, black, black. <laughs> It is. Because they're black, y'all. And they're black, y'all. And they're black and they're black and they're black, y'all. So if you need some black power in your life from this year, listen to that record. <laughs> it's good. Oh, nice. It's good. Especially because it's Brooklyn black and black, which is different from other black and black. Right, well. Just saying. But my number one record <gasps> from this year. Which is two? Th- what is it? Ninety-eight? Yeah. Rip is my all right. The Miseducation of Lauren Hill by Lauren Hill. <laughs> wow! 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 That record. She won eight Grammys that year, or five Grammys. Not that that really means anything, but it is a fantastic record from front to back. She does these little interlude thing and jigs in the middle, which is fine. But the songs are very powerful. You you know. That thing, you know that song, whether you don't think you do, but you do know that thing. Yes, you do, Paul. Yes, you do, Paul. You know Who are you Paul. talking to? You know I don't know that. Yes, yeah, you, you do. do. Wait, yes, because the singles of the year I discussed this and I played it. You know this song. Oh, okay. Well, I, 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 I've, I've forgotten it already. Yeah. It's just a shame that still to this day, nobody has told Lauren that you can continue making more albums after you have a successful album. Well, it's just it's, that's a special it's, case, though. <laughs> Okay, there. Uh, let me have a moment to do a crystal clarification. Is this going to be an in defense of Lauren Hill? Um, it's a clarification. It's a clarification. Okay. So, Lauren Hill, allegedly, because I don't know this for a fact, she went through a lot of shit when she was in the Fugees with uh, Praz and... And what's his face? Primarily Praz. And being a woman in the record industry, being a black woman in the record industry, even though this was a hip hop centric, you know, black centric thing, she still caught a lot of bullshit from people. And the Fugees were great. I love the Fugees, most of it, not all of it, but most of it. And then they split up for whatever reasons. And her and Wyclef had an affair while they were in the Fugees. Did they? Yes, they did. And um, then the repercussions of that, she wrote a lot of these songs on this album about that relationship. So she puts out this record, like people really were like, okay, I guess you can do this. They weren't really 100% behind her. She puts it out, it's a huge blockbuster. And then all of the people who kind of like poo pooed her, like, oh yeah, I helped with the record too. I'm so awesome. I, I, I knew the whole time. I was there in the studio, blah. And she was kind of wrecked by that. Also, she was dating, stay away from them, Marley boys. Ladies out in the audience, do not date any sons of Bob Marley because they will fuck your shit up. So she was with Rohan. They wound up having kids together, tumultuous relationship, nuts. And she kind of went kooky. Not kind of. She went kooky. She went nuts. I don't think she didn't go seek therapy or anything like that. And that has affected the rest of her career up to this point in 2024. Is that where we're at? Yes. Yeah, Happy New Year. We're in 2024. So anybody who saw her tour, her last tour, she was three, four hours late all the time and then showed up like... Bitch, you better be lucky I showed up. You're lucky that you bought a ticket. Like, that kind of attitude, which is not a good look at all. Not Not at all. No matter who you are. No matter who you are, because it was the anniversary of this album, so that's the tour. And a friend of mine is DJed open for her, and I didn't get any tea from her. But uh, Lauryn Hill has a lot of issues, and I feel bad for her that people 
as with, you know, who is it? Elvis Presley, blah, blah, blah. You got a lot of yes people around you. That right. Do whatever you say and whatever you want. And nobody who could grab her by the collar and be like, knock it off, motherfucker. You know? So the last straw for that was one of the last shows that she did last year. She had her mother on stage and all this because people were filming her at the shows. You know, I waited five hours and this bitch finally showed up kind of thing. And then she'd get mad at somebody for playing the wrong note and would just walk off stage after you paid $200 for a ticket to see her, right? So I feel bad for her, but also I feel as though in some ways as an adult, you got to take responsibility for your shit. And I don't feel as though she's taking responsibility for her shit. But well, when again, you're, like when I you don't have know, mental issues, you don't yeah. really, you, don't don't, really so you often don't know you need to need take care them. of shit. And yeah. you know, I feel as though some people were telling her, "Come on, girl, get it together," and she kind of did what she wanted to do. But uh, yeah, I feel bad for her. So, in the end. This but is, this album is fantastic. This so this is, is kind of like oh, go ahead, no, go this is like Fleetwood Mac rumors, but with mental issues. Yeah, yeah. This this is the reason <laughs> why like, I make snide remarks when people mention Lauryn Hill. I know that she's dealing with mental issues, and I I am not. Uh, I don't lack empathy there. You yeah. know, I. I uh, but we're talking twenty six freaking years later. I know, I know, I and know. she's still up her own ass. Yeah. And well, somehow she no hasn't one dealt with her shit. Nobody has ever told her, hey, you know, it might be beneficial <laughs> if you fucking show up I have another example. I have time. another example of this. Go ahead. Two words. What? Kanye West. Oh. Well, I mean, which is a whole other. Thing. Now, I do not have any sympathy for Kanye. I don't. I, I do. I that's hard. That I can't. I can't go there. I'll explain why later. But that's my. <laughs> that, list. That'll be a later. That's a later thing. Yes. Yes. But that's the picture. end of my clarification. Then that's the end of my list. Top ten. I got ten. 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 That's your list and your and list. two runners up. My list and list. That wow. is a freaking incredible feat you have. Oh ah, yeah. Off. I applaud thee. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> At the Attic Vintage Clothing Store in Las Vegas, the only thing that's out of style is using American Express. So bring your Visa card. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. Nah, sorry. Oh, never mind. Start over. No, again. no, no. Oh. You're wrong. We're back. <laughs> nah. Ah. And this time, it really is. Paul's I really turn. am going to do mine this time. No, it turns out it's my turn. No, you no, don't know no, what's no, going no, on, no. Paul. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. Mm-mm. I have. Okay. I have not only honorable mentions. I have two honorable mentions. Oh. But I have a mention. Oh, a I have, mention. I have a mention. A mention. And now the reason I have a mention <laughs> is because <laughs> it's Kiss Psycho Circus, and I'm not sure if it's an honorable or a dishonorable <sighs> mention. Oh, it's, a little, it's a little of both. I had a feeling this was going to happen. Oh, it's a little, it's a no. little of both, so it's just a mention. Mention. Yep, it okay. exists. <laughs> that album Psycho came Circus. out. Yes, oh, it, wow. it, it, was, it was in your CD rack. <laughs> Confirmed. Nine. Okay, honorable mentions. Mayfield by Mayfield. Does anybody know who Mayfield is? I remember that. No. Nope. Yeah. I do remember that. Kurt Smith from Tears for Fears. Yes. He li- he w- he moved here to New York and formed a band called it Mayfield. Kurt is Mayfield. Get it? Oh. Zing. Yeah. And and was just playing clubs. He played the fucking Mercury Lounge or mm-hmm. wherever and and did that for a few years and and put together a bunch of songs and put out an album that nobody bought. And it's really good. Yeah, it is good. Yeah. Um, Beastie Boys, Hello Nasty. Yeah. And their honorable mention. Oh, so, oh. Yeah. But uh, now on to my, my least, least. Yeah, least, least. My least, least. Oh, uh, yeah. Coming in at number 10. Coming in hot, hot. at number 10. I, I don't hot. normally say that. I always say that. But this time it, it, it this time it's it's appropriate the donnas with american teenage rock oh, and roll machine yeah 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 now the donnas 
they had been around, like they had one album prior to that, and I think probably a couple singles. I did not hear of them. I heard of them because they were on the cover of one of those, you know, you go into record stores and they had like the free mag. Oh, yeah. You know, that you always got the monthly free rag. And they were on the cover, and I was like, it just it just looked cool right on the cover. You could just it was a picture of them like from the same photo shoot as the cover of this album. Uh huh. And it was like, what's this? It looks like the Runaways or something. And I grabbed the the magazine. And I went home and read it and went, oh shit, I have, I have to buy this. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go. I have to get one of these. Uh-huh. So I went and I bought it. Yeah, and it's, this was this great record of just these four girls in Palo Alto, California, who. They, they they come from a nice area, they come from a nice area, but they make they 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 were just like these four girls who liked the Ramones. Rock. Yeah, they liked the Ramones. They could barely play and except kiss. for the guitar Everybody. player. Oh. Um, yeah, but the drummer called up real quick. Quick, man. yeah, Donna, yeah. She she was, she was good. Yeah, yeah. Beast. And um, they were good when they were on SNL after that first record. Yeah. Yeah, Very yeah. Good. I you know I I saw them live a couple times at that period and. You know, they sound exactly like they do on this record. Yeah. You know, because you listen to this record, and it's clearly like they're not—they're not tracking that. They're putting mics in front of amps, and they're playing right into the yeah. right yeah. onto the tape. Yeah, it's really a bit ramshackle. The the vocals are technically terrible, but they work. <laughs> She's but not, they, but they, but they work. She's not a good singer, but we but just got works. used to it. Yeah. You know, and some inexplicably, <clears throat> but the guitar player fucking smokes. Donna R. Donna R. Yeah. And uh, the bass player Donna. Donna F. F. I, think. I always wanted to say M. Her name's uh, Maya. So I always yes. say Donna M. Donna F. The bassist is the coolest. Donna R. The guitar player is by far the best musician. This is the best. I'm yeah. telling you, man. I'm telling you. Donna C. The drummer. No, she, she's great too. She became a fucking monster, man. Yeah, I, she was. She was like a. She tore them fucking. She was like. She looked up, like an animal? octopus. Yes. <laughs> behind yeah, the drums, because she, she had really long hair and she had these thin yeah. arms, arms and she was like this. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. But, good. all right, so yeah, that's the Donnas. So, coming in at number nine, the Cardigans. Yeah. <laughs> with the first album I bought that I was disappointed with, but I've come around. Oh. Gran Turismo. Oh, yeah. The thing is about this record is that it came out, and I was excited, you know, bought it the day it came out, drink. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> it, they, they kind of went into this, oh, it's the 90s, we have to go dark now. So it's kind of dark cardigans. Yeah. And I was just like, okay, okay. Mm, no. And I just kind of tossed the CD aside. But I, I went back to it when I was making this list. And I went, you know, I'm, I'm okay. Yeah. I'm okay. I don't know if it was desperation to get the list filled out or, or what. No, but it's decent. It's not a bad record. Yeah. Well the, well, the thing, too, is that when I went back to it, I hadn't listened to this since it was like, since like the week it came out. And I remembered some of the songs. It yeah. was like, oh, shit, I still remember this from listening to it then, you know? Yep. Yeah. That's good. That's a good hallmark. So number eight. My number eight is the first album by Josh Rouse. Josh Rouse. Mm -mm. His album Dressed Up Like Nebraska. He's he's like a Josh Rouse. He's very kinda he's very middle American. Uh can be a little acoustic y. Um but but a lot of really major seventies pop influences. As his records go on, especially the later albums that I'll talk about, spoiler alert, on later lists, he gets to a point where he really gets his Fleetwood Mac vibe goes going. Like, he has some songs where it sounds like a cross between The Smiths and Fleetwood Mac. Yeah, he, get, he gets really yeah he gets to where it's like it sounds it has a really great '70s radio vibe to it, you hmm. know. But interesting. This How'd is his first album, not my favorite, but you know. How'd you find this guy? Um, well, I was reading about him. Mojo and Uncut and those kind of magazines were crowing about him a lot, and and maybe three albums or so went by of me just seeing this name and this face in the magazines. And then my my roommate at the time, John Crop, shout out to John Crop, John Crop, he was doing work for Ryko Disc, and oh. some of the Josh Rouse albums started coming out of Ryko, and he started putting out like his really like right when he started putting out his best albums, those records were coming into the house as promos, um. and I listened to him and went, oh, got it. Interesting. So, All right. All right, so number seven, a record that I, a year ago, didn't know existed. I heard of the band, but I just listened to it for the first time this year. Space Hog, the oh, Chinese yeah. Oh, yeah. album. Space Hog, yeah. Space Hog, yeah. Okay, yeah. The, the, yeah, the, the Chinese album. The opening track has kind of a synthetic, almost hip-hop-y percussion kind of thing about it, which I don't like. But after that, it becomes this slightly eccentric, glammy rock record mm-hmm. that, that's really, really good. Yeah. 
Yeah. All right. Number six. Super drag. <laughs> <laughs> no, not super or whatever. Chunk. Not, not super grass. Not super chunk. N- not super chunk. Yeah. Not super suckers. Not yeah, super, super fucking whatever. Super, super drag. <laughs> <laughs> Say you're a 90s band without saying you're a 90s band. (laughs) (laughs) Super drag with head trip in every key. Now, this is their second album. I got the first album because there was a a single on the radio that I heard that I really liked. But I didn't really get into the album. So when this came out, I ignored it. And a little bit later on, I gave it a listen, and I kind of liked it. But I still didn't. Yeah. (laughs) But I still didn't get really into it. Now I listen to it, and it's like, oh, damn, this is really fucking good. I mean, it basically sounds like a, a punchier Matthew Sweet. Oh, okay. Like Matthew oh, Sweet, just, right. just a little bit more, mm, you know, and Head Trippin' in Every Key, there's a little bit more of a, a psych kind of vibe to this album than their other ones. Um, yeah. You so. said you heard it on the radio? Well, a song from the, fir- the, from the previous album. On college radio? Uh, I don't remember what the station was. Oh. Um, does anybody remember? Who sucked out the feeling? Who sucked out the feeling? Oh, oh, oh. Look at me, I could write a melody, but I can't expect the song to kill. Yeah. That was the song. It was on the radio, first oh, album, but okay. I didn't like the album. Hmm. Very okay, that was more time than Super Drag needed to get. <laughs> Number five. I think you owe him 20 bucks, Super Drag. Number five. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys are going to be rejoicing because you have so far when I brought this name up. Kamita! Oh, yeah! With their second album, What Makes It Go. Who? What Makes It Go. I don't know. That title... Oh, tell, that's what that record sounds like. That record sounds like a band that would give an album that title. What makes it go? Very 90s. Well, Ish. it's also kind of, you know, it's quirky and kind of, you know, and it's like Euro, it's Euro quirk. Wow. I'm, I'm, I'm making uh. up terms here. Euro quirk. That's a new Euro genre. Quirk. That's a genre name. Euro quirk. Um, number four. Money Mark with Push the Button. Yes. Money, money, money. Made by number four. I, you know, when the first album came out, I got it and I liked it, but I wasn't really heavily into it. This album, I was obsessed with. Ooh. And people weren't really that into it. Like, people, I heard, this, this album got a lot of flack because it made the great mistake, the great, you know, crime of having fucking songs on it. It actually has, like, real fucking songs on it. It's not like half sketches and a bunch of keyboard instrumentals and shit. Like, it has good, like, pop rock songs. Rock songs, on it. yeah. Yeah. What up, Money Mark? Right? You're the ginchiest. <laughs> we follow each other on Instagram. Yeah, he watches the show. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, that's cool. Thanks, Money. Number three. I forget, I'm forgetting what number I'm on. Number oh, three. Sorry. Up uh, by R.E.M. Huh. Up by R.E.M. This is the first album post Bill Berry. And. Okay. Did anybody take his place? No. Not no. officially, oh. no. It's kind of like with the Rolling Stones. When oh. somebody leaves, they just... Be, or, or the monkeys. <laughs> when somebody leaves, they're just down one member. Mm, yeah. Okay. But, uh... Hmm. And I think that's because they were kind of like Led Zeppelin in that they didn't really feel like... They, you know, unlike Kiss, they didn't feel like just anybody could come and do it. Like, they were those guys, and if one of those guys isn't there, then just one of those guys isn't there. Unlike you Kiss. You know what I mean? <laughs> Unlike Kiss. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm talking about. You know about. what I'm talking you about. You know what I'm talking about. Mm. But now that, that R.E.M. album, I remember when it was coming out, and of course, surprise, surprise, Rolling Stone was making a big-ass deal about, oh, all right, everybody, here yeah, comes here the comes. new first trio album by R.E.M. All right, it's going to be amazing. No and, mandolin. Right, right. Well, okay. <laughs> right before the album came out, they, they put out... A review of it you know as they did with like the bigger albums there would be like the week of but not quite when right. it came out there would yeah. be a review and rolling stone was sh- was absolutely just <laughs> they absolutely thought it was great <laughs> i mean they just went on and on and on and on and on about it i still remember i still remember the final sentence of the of the review was it's a remarkable album <laughs> so it comes out 
<laughs> so it comes out. <laughs> oh, that's just the review. He, that's normally the review. he'll yeah, say the review they was just the wow, like wow, 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 <laughs> wow. <Yeah>. Sorry, kids. <laughs> so, so after Rolling Stone puts out this review saying how amazing of a record it is, the record comes out and nobody likes it. Everybody thinks it's shitty. You know, it doesn't sell that well. The year-end review in Rolling Stone is saying how much the album sucks. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm. It's almost, it's Rolling almost Stone. like Rolling Stone has no credibility, but that can't be it. Anyway, moving on. Ouch! Yeah. But, but in the long... And, and, <coughs> oh, okay, but, okay, but I have to say, I fucking loved this album. There was a period when this was my favorite R.E.M. album. Apparently, Bill time? Berry also loved this record. But yes, yes, we, so we talked about yeah. it before. He, he was like kind of bummed out. Like, I quit the band, and then they make their best album. Yeah, yeah, he said that, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, Bill they Berry. Despite you, Bill Berry. Yeah. But, so, <laughs> I, I took so much flack for loving this album. Well, now, I go online, and all these R.E.M. fans, they all fucking love this love album it. now. It's like, yeah, where were you, motherfucker? Where were you Wishy -washy when Charlie we were in Browns. the trenches? Mm. All right. Number two. <laughs> oh, boy, you didn't see this one coming. Sloan! Yeah! With Navy Blues! Yeah, Sloan! This is possibly my favorite Sloan album. Oh, yeah? Possibly, yeah. And what's really amazing is that... like this. Okay, this is obviously a 1998 album, mm -hmm. but about two years ago, they did a tour where they were uh, just a tour playing this album in its entirety because they put out a box set... Oh. Like a deluxe box set that they kind of independently released. And then they went on tour playing the album in its entirety. And I went to the Bowery Ballroom and saw them. And that was fucking awesome. Oh, wow. That's nice. Uh, they didn't do anything. They just did that record and that's it. I think it. they did. Well, they did. It was one of those things where they did two sets. They did a set where they did random songs, but they did one set that was just, just the, the album record. beginning to end. Okay. And yeah. If you're a fan of that album, I'm telling you. Okay, so number one, my number one album. Glasses lightly off. Lightly. <laughs> glasses mainly off, just because I don't want to wear them. It's the 90s right now. after all. I, I don't want to actually see this in front of me. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh -oh. Imperial Teen. I what? Oh, see. Sorry. What's not to love? Okay, that's what I get. I know the name of the fucking album, but the minute I take my glasses, glasses off, off, my brain goes, oh yeah, fuck you. Well, what was it again, kid? What was it? What's Not to Love. This is their second album, and I, ha I hadn't really been heavily into the first one when it came out. I kind of, there were songs I liked more than others, but when, or when they were working on this album, I started, to go in to see, started going to see them live. Um, my friend, uh, my roommate John, who I just mentioned, John Crop, he was friends with uh, Joan from the band. He'd known Joan since before she'd ever even been in a fucking band. And so we would go see them, and they were playing songs from this album months and months before it came out. And I was just like, fuck, what was that song? What was that song? Man, that song's really good. And it turned out it was from the album that they were working on. But they kept running into problems, putting out the album. It kept getting pushed back and getting pushed back and getting pushed back. And then finally it came out. Like, I think it probably it really should have come out in 97, but it didn't. And uh, Were they on a major label? Yes. Oh. And Surprise. But then finally it came out, and not much happened with it, but... I loved the album, and I still like that. I think it holds up. All right, homework time. Yeah. But yeah. I like them. All right, there you go. So, in light of all that... Sorry. I'm always late to the party. See? See? <laughs> Wind blowing hair. Arms akimbo. Arms akimbo. Akimbo. <laughs> Standing on the mountain, oh. cape flapping. <laughs> wow. Captain 1998 Maybe, over here. Yeah. <laughs> Captain 1998. Captain 1998. Oh, shit. That is, that is a, no, you We're don't, gonna be you don't want to be that. Soon. Yeah, you don't want to be that guy. That is a terrible superhero. No, I oh, love the that. worst superhero. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. How about some commercials? Commercials. <laughs> Yo, down here. I'm the Brooklyn Bridge. You think you could take me? You want a piece of me, huh? Let's go. You and me. Right now. The undeniably 
and smooth, ever luxurious ES300. The road is calling. Answer it. I got your fancy suspension right here. Missing something? Well, it's mine now. School's out, beefy boy. Looks like someone's going without his after-school snack. No! Easter, baby! Mm, Imagine being the little girl that has to sit there in, in, and in a room full of strangers that. and sing, Magic Patty Baby! <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a minute, we're back! Pick- oh, yeah. oh, we're back, we're back. Oh, are we? Okay. Well, just in time, because Tommy is chomping at the bit Tommy. to give you his list. Am I? <laughs> yeah, yes, you, are. you are. Man, I sat here oh, for the last don't pretend. two you segments were just like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Come on, Tommy. Mm-hmm. You got I don't, I just... Mm. Come on, man. The problem is I just don't like anything anymore. That's fine. That's fine. You don't have to. Nobody said you have to. It is what it is. Do it. Uh, do it. Do it. Do it. Okay, fine. List on, dude. All right. List on. List, well, list, 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 list on. List on. Do, do, do. Hi, list my name is. is Tommy, and I haven't liked anything that's come out in the last 30 years. <laughs> What's list your zodiac on. sign? <laughs> Are you a Capricorn? I'm Virgo. Virgo. <laughs> Oh, that's good. Hi, my name is Tommy, and I'm a Virgo, and I'm going to yell at this cloud, and I'll get off my lawn. <laughs> This is great because oh, I now I don't feel so bad because normally I'm that guy, but with Tommy around, I yeah, like I'm so not hey, that guy now. That's good. Do you, I mean, do you want to know why? Why? Shall I give you a treatise? You shall. Tommy's treatise. All right, here's a treatise. All right, okay. you know it's. I might as well get this out of the way now. Everyone knows how I feel about the music of the 90s, and you've probably made a lot of assumptions how I feel about the music of the the decades that followed the 90s. There is a reason. It does kind of make logical sense that I just don't like anything. Mm -hmm. So if you look at every decade, every decade that's like clearly identifiable as far as like music goes, if you like the style of that decade, like if you like production trends, if you tend to like some R&B from the 80s, you'll probably like a lot of R&B from the 80s. If you like some pop from the 80s, you'll like a lot of it. Uh, You know, same goes for the 70s, same goes for the 60s, same goes for the first half of the 90s. If you don't like the production trends, if you do not like the songwriting trends of a particular decade, you're probably not going to find much of anything that came out at all that you liked. If you don't like most of the R&B trends in a decade, you're not going to like pretty much any of the R&B, any right. of the pop, any of the rock. Yeah. And then what ends up happening is following decades are very influenced by the preceding decades. So the bands that started coming out, rock bands that started coming out in the late 90s and the early 2000s were all influenced now by the early 90s grunge movement. <laughs> I don't like the early 90s grunge movement. I don't like what happened to rock and metal in the early 90s. So why am I going to like anything that that influenced in the late 90s or right. the 2000s or the teens? Yeah, so, that's pretty rough. When, you, when, when your yeah. seeds, when your seeds are grunge... That's rough. And that's what I'm dealing with <laughs> That here. is that's R-U-F-F rough. rough. <laughs> so, I mean, in, in fairness, I'm just not going to like much of anything that came out in 98 or 99 or most of the 2000s or most of the teens. There's going to be, like, you know, select few examples. Like, if you look at the 80s again, and we know Paul largely does not love the 80s. It's clearly not the way I do. There's some stuff he likes. Hey, man. And a lot of stuff he don't like. The 90s make the 80s look like the fucking 60s. <laughs> oh, of course. Wow. Of course. <laughs> but, like, to, to, to use the 80s as, as an example, there was and I forget the name of the album it was that you held up as one of the albums that you liked in the late 80s that sounded exactly like a 60s psychedelic pop record Dukes of Stratosphere Dukes of Stratosphere so in any decade you're going to find you're going to find exceptions yeah and you're going to find that I'm going to have albums that are going to be coming up in coming years that are very, very notable exceptions. That and don't be sound the only album he has on the right, list. and they might and they might very well be like for example when we get into like 03, 04 and Spoiler, once the darkness come out, 
clear, oh, notable clearly, exception yes, yes. that sounds nothing like anything else going on in, in, in pop and rock music at the time. And that's that's a perfect example of that kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. But I, I'm sorry, like the next streak of episodes, like as we go through the aughts, as we go through the teens, I'm just not there for any of this stuff. And why would I be? It doesn't make any logical sense that's that I'm going to be. Yeah, that's fine. But well, with well, that being see, said, let's see what he's made of this pile of yeah, shit. Let's yeah, see yeah. what this pile of shit that is 1998. Well, I'll tell you what I've done. I have a list of ten songs, and seven of them are in the category called "I Can't Stand Behind These Anymore." But this is what I was listening to in the late 90s. Okay, so that category is still alive and well. Oh, yeah. it's going to be for the next few years. I, did, I did, wasn't sure how long that stretched. It's going to be running till about 2003, and at that point, it stops. At that point, there isn't even anything. Yeah. Nope. Okay. Got but it. the best part about that is, is that Paul always thinks of a new and different way to. Which do is that so anagram, delightful. Which I love. I've been I've been loving that every <laughs> it's time. So good. Yeah. So my number ten. The Donnas with America Teenage Rock and Roll Machine, which is also your I didn't ten. see that one coming. I, when, I, when I looked at it, I was like, if that isn't on Tommy's list, then, then fucking <laughs> water, 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 water is, is not Then wet. why are we even yeah, fucking doing this? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> What's the point? My number nine, The Suicide Machines with Battle Hymns. Oh, wait a minute. But you have The Donnas in the wrong category. I, I'm not into that album anymore. I'm, right. so, I'm sorry, man. Um, anyway, continue. <laughs> <sighs> My number eight, Chicks Dig It with Born on the 1st of July. Get it? Because they're Canadian. Oh. Chicks Dig It. But what? Chicks Dig It. Yeah. Born on the what? 1st of July. Oh. It's Canada Day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. My number seven, The Travoltas with Modern World. Mm, Travoltas, I... a band I ended up on the same record label with at one point. What was that the label? The Travoltas. Fast Music. I've never heard of that. They were from the Netherlands. Oh, really? The Travoltas. Yep, they sound like a Beach Boys meets Ramones kind of thing. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Actually, you might want to check out some Travoltas. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Homework. My number six, another band that I also ended up on the same record label with. Same label? Same label. The Huntingtons with High School Rock. I have never heard of them. Chirp, <laughs> chirp, chirp, chirp. I know. I know. Blank stare, blank stare, blank stare, blank, blank stare. Well, I had plenty of blank stares for both of you in your well, segments, yeah. so. Fair. All right, my number six, the sloppy seconds with more trouble than they're worth. I've I've heard the name, but I decided they sounded like they were more trouble than they're worth. So I got nothing. Listen, yeah. That's fair. My number four, the queers with punk rock confidential. Yeah, queers, <laughs> more queers. All right. They're like the saviors of your lists. They're the only <laughs> things keeping my list going queers at this point. Queers for fears. <laughs> and that concludes I Can't Stand Behind These Anymore, but this is what I was listening to in the late 90s. And now here's my top three. My number three, Beastie Boys with Hello Nasty. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. My number two, an album you think would be in this other category, but it is still delightful and fun to this day. A desperately silly punk rock album The Vandals with Hitler Bad, Vandals Good <laughs> Oh, it is just <laughs> Wow It is a deeply Ooh. profoundly, fundamentally silly album, but it is still so much fun. I forgot all about that And my number one for 1998 Crystal? Yes Go ahead. Hole with Celebrity yeah. Skin Oh, Whoa! Yowza! I'm sorry, but I reassessed this record this is a good goddamn it's, album. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. It's a good freaking it's record. Good. I, again, I like it. I don't like it as much as the first one, but I like I like it. It's good. This is what I got to work with for 1998, and yeah. that ends up in the top spot. Okay. Well, if you if you I think if you erased the least essential uh, element to that album and replaced it, oh shit, Courtney, <laughs> that would probably be a pretty good. <laughs> Dude, I'll tell you what, man. I don't know who the hell actually played the rhythm guitar on this record, but. Her vocals are really good on this album, yeah. man. I don't know how they got those takes out of her. She seems like she would be an absolute disaster in the studio. I'm trying to remember. Yeah. But yeah, they yeah. managed to do it. They managed to do it. Like, I'm thinking that this was when she was doing uh, The People vs. Larry Flint. Yeah, she seemed to have her shit or was together it rehearsals? Then. And oh, she right. pulled she herself been, together. Yeah. Because then she became a movie. And she was really good in that movie. If you haven't yeah, seen was. that movie, seen watch it. it. The People vs. Larry Flint. Fantastic. Woody Harrelson as Larry Flint. Great. Yeah. But that was when 
when she all of a sudden like got another nose job. She was a glamour puss at oh, the Oscars yeah. and the Golden Globes, and was like a fully formed human being. I don't know if for like she, a minute. I don't know if she was clean she at was the clean. time. Yeah. For like a minute, maybe at that, and she, maybe she had the right trainers the and right life people. coaches or yeah. whatever. Whoever but she, was in charge of her got her the right squad. Yeah. And she pulled it together and became a good person. What needed to happen with Lauren Hill happened with Courtney Love, Courtney but Love, it only yeah. worked temporarily. Exactly. Oh, yes, because Courtney Love immediately just reverted right to yeah, yeah, insanity yeah. and everything. But somehow we got, I think, a really, really goddamn strong record out of this. Yeah, it's a good record. So You guys can have it. <laughs> <laughs> it is all yours. Be Thanks, my guest. Paul. One for each of you. Thank you, Paul. All right. Please, please. Okay. You can be the good cop. Thank you. You have a lovely home. Look, she overpaid. Overpaid? You gotta go to Big Kmart. Low prices all the time, lowest sale prices every time. Guaranteed. I didn't know. I don't buy that. I'll take you to lunch. Big Kmart is a better way to say guaranteed. You know, it's good cop, bad cop. Not a bearably kind cop. Hi, I'm Devin Skillion. I'm Carmen Herlin. After an incredible nine years, Seinfeld left the airwaves at the top of its game. It was a long look back last night, two hours of a lot of laughs. No word yet on how the stars will spend their time now, but the characters will spend the next year in jail. The Red Wings lead their playoff series three games to one. They beat the St. Louis Blues five to two. The two teams meet again on Sunday. If the Wings win, they can clinch the series. Stay with the news beat where local news comes first. Yes. <laughs> Spirit train rat. She is. <laughs> Not just a spirit animal. No, she's my spirit train wreck. My spirit train wreck. Your yeah. spirit animal is somebody else. Your spirit right. train wreck. So we are back. And We're we back. are here to do what is most essential to do come the late 90s, and that is hate. Hate. Yeah, this is the suck list. Yep. And Crystal it. begins. Mm -hmm. And boy, is my list long. <laughs> yeah. Wowza. Uh, my All lists right. are spiritually long, longer than they actually longer. are. Same. And I will admit <laughs> that a lot of it is low hanging fruit, but it's, it's all still, low hanging fruit. It still fruit. needs to be mentioned. All right. So I got a twofer from Prince. The first one is Crystal Ball. Oh, what? I don't like it. There's all kinds of good stuff. No, it's not. And the other one I don't <laughs> like is New Power Soul by the New Power Generation. Oh. Yeah. Question, is the Crystal Ball, is that the one that has uh, chlorine bacon skin? Yeah, it's, it? yeah. it's a three-disc set yeah. of, of, out of, of vault stuff. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and just, there's, there's some really crap track on, tracks on it, but some really good stuff, too. No. <laughs> then I got uh, Train. Train. Anything about Train. Is, uh, aren't they the ones who did Hey Soul Sister Blah 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 Okay you know what yeah. That's a double <laughs> Yeah That's them yep. um, That guy's good looking though But terrible Alright Then I got Van Halen 3 Yow 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 I'm just gonna say right now <laughs> Yeah Say it I predict a trifecta on that But Oh yeah uh, Probably Which is very appropriate Given the title But anyway uh -huh. Yeah probably then I have Walking Into Clarksdale by Jimmy Page and Robert Plant. Have you? Have I've, I've heard it. I mean, I don't think it's me? great, but I wouldn't put it in the um, year. I think it's terrible. I haven't heard that in decades now. I don't remember I, hating it, but I remember not being impressed by it. Well, I hate it. <laughs> then I got He Got Game by Public Enemy. Oh, dear. Oh, Public Enemy went down, huh? They went downhill. They did... That movie, did you, see, oh, you haven't seen that movie? I haven't seen that it's movie. It's a basketball it movie, and the songs that they did are corny. If you can believe that they could do something corny, it was corny. It was not the P.E. that ruled the world uh, earlier. It's, mm -hmm. not, it's not good. I hate it. Then, this is when Paul and I got off this particular train, number five by Lenny Kravitz. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Then I got Soul Asylum. Ugh. Aaron Carter. Ugh. The Black Eyed Peas. Ah. System of a Down. Ah. <laughs> uh, Evanescence. Ah. Oh, that's, I'll Ace do that for base. you, Tommy. Ace of Base. Evanescence, can, just two seconds on Evanescence. I just don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand. I watched 
MTV at that point in time when they were you know, skyrocketing the fame and their interviews and listen to the records. I just don't get it. She did have a nice voice. I don't know if they're still together. She had a nice voice. But the whole, it was just like a weird thing to me. I I don't get it. I think it's just, they are still together in... Uh if you could, in a tech, no, <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a technicality, it's her and just hired guns, and I think it's oh, been that okay. way for, for right. long decades time. now. Yeah. All right, well, I don't get it. I, I was probably too old well, for it at the time because I'm always too old for everything. But uh, yeah, it was just oh, uh, yeah. And then I got the. Um, I know we're not supposed to do compilations, but. I'm going to do yeah, it anyway. It sucks that bad. It sucks that bad. Uh, Use Your Illusion by Guns N' Roses. <laughs> well, that's not a compilation. It was a compilation record. Yeah, because originally it came out in 91, right? The first oh, one. Oh, what did they do? Like a combo, like the best of kind of a thing? Yeah. Oh. And it's still... They did they? Yeah. They put them together? Yeah. I didn't know about this. It was one big mess. Oh. Yeah. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Huh. Okay. Yep, but the worst of this particular year, Ooh. and it really hurts my heart... And that is Blues Brothers 2000. Now, yeah. Yeah. there was oh. absolutely no reason for this movie to be made. To even exist, yeah. To even oh, exist. Oh, that's a bad one. That's it was so bad. so terrible. So terrible. And to me, it's a slap in the face insult to the Blues Brothers because that movie is one of the best movie musicals ever, 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 ever put out. And the soundtrack is incredible. You had Ray Charles... I just... I can't even get into it. Just... You know it or you don't. And if you don't know it, watch it. But this thing was jammed together. So there's John Goodman. There's some little white kid uh-huh. who was an orphan or something. I don't know what his name is. And then it was Jim Belushi. And Erica Badu was in it as like a voodoo priestess and blah, blah, blah. So it was the same formula. Some crazy thing, we had to get money for an orphanage or whatever it was to save this little white kid. And then they travel through wherever and come across all these black musicians who wind up doing a feature song. And then, you know, at the end they make the money, yay! And it's a happy ending with a big red bow on it. And it's just so bad. So bad. And as you say, unnecessary. Unnecessary. Unwatchable, actually. It's, yeah. It's cringe-inducingly bad. Uns. It's really bad. Like, yeah. It's almost not even worth it to fast forward to the bullshit to get to the music parts. It's that bad. Yeah. Well. I, yeah. And it's, it hurts me. It hurts my heart because I love the Blues, Bro- Blues Brothers so much. Well. Well, well, well. well, well. I have only three. Um, well, ahead, actually, no, I have four. Take a shit. And, well, <coughs> well, okay, first, well, I'm going to say that other than Crystal Ball, I co-sign on Crystal's entire list. But I have four of my own, one of which is Lenny Kravitz 5. <coughs> oh, my God. Gonna fly in the sky like a dragonfly. <laughs> really, dude? <laughs> fucking hey, Jesus fucking hey, Christ. Hey, hey, he went to the uh, Mark Boland School of Lyrics. <sighs> <sighs> Tell me I'm wrong. I'm not. Go ahead, Paul. Massive Attack with Mezzanine. Oh, yeah. Massive Attack. Now... I have a particular hatred for this record because I don't like it to begin with, but at the time when this was current, I had a roommate who loved this album Uh-oh. and played it loudly all the time every fucking day. I I you know our rooms were on the opposite ends of the hall, but I still could hear it and it was I just and there were certain moments in the album that I hated in particular, and those moments always seemed to be the loudest. <laughs> There's a song. Anybody who knows this 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 album knows it's a song where this guy is singing, I got to get away from he. I would hear that over and over and over, and I'd be like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> Finally, I asked her, what is that album? Oh, it's Mezzanine by Massive Attack. Thank you for telling me what I hate. Now I know. I can put it on the list. <laughs> I can go on with my life. Uh, yes, so yes. Yeah, so that's it's very important. That's that's <laughs> know the enemy. Yeah, that's no. why I have I an app. You know those apps you have on your phone to, to identify a song. Yeah. That's why I have the app because I need to know okay, when I'm going to go start, okay, what is this song what I hate? It? I can't stand okay, it. I have to you have to know know the enemy. Know the enemy. <laughs> so the return of Neutral Milk Hotel with oh, in God. the aeroplane over the sea. I've already, I've already said my piece or my not so piece about them, and of course, 
my worst of the year, even though it's not worse than the previous album that I just mentioned. For reasons, it's my worst of the year. Van Halen 3. Yeah, yeah. I mean, ugh. Oh, you know, dear. when that ugh. record was pending, I was interested. I didn't, re- I didn't like Extreme. I didn't have really a particular thing about him as a vocalist. But I thought, well, you know, even though I'm not a fan of Sammy Hagar era Van Halen, they pulled it off, right? Yes, I'm not into it, but my feelings aside, they pulled it off. Let's see. Let's let's see. Yeah. And Gary Sharon can sing. Sing, yeah. Just not the right fit at Boy, all. Boy, did they not pull it off this time? Wrong oh thing. man! And not. then you watch. I looked at clips, live clips on on uh, online, where they're doing classic songs. That guy doing Dave songs. Oh, that is hide your eyes and look away. Embarrassing. Mm. He's up there like disco dancing, like you know. Oh god! It's it's terrible. Yeah, and, I, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, Van Halen trying to be '90s, trying to be. I just they should have stopped. They yeah. should have stopped after Dave left, and then it's like, okay, you get Sam Hagar. He's a rocker. He's a red rocker, zing, and can not replace Dave, but at least he's a rockin' rock, rockety rock guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's rock, so, y'all. Rockish. He's so rockety, he's rockety, 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 rock, rockety, rock, 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 rock guy. He's kind of rock, 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 rock <laughs> So it's like, okay, so it's okay. But Sharon? Mm-mm. Mm. No. He's, again, great voice. Decent singer. But he's not the right But he's guy. not the right fit <sighs> for this. It was this. just all the wrong ingredients yeah, for that record. Terrible. Worst gumbo ever. Well, all right, Tommy. What up, Tommy? There couldn't possibly be anything that you dislike from this year. Yeah. You probably had to work really hard on this list. Oh, I had to search far and wide yeah. <laughs> to find anything I liked. Um, all right. I've got dishonorable mentions. Mm-hmm. Devil Without a Cause by Kid Rock. Oh, oh God. I mean... I skipped that on purpose. <laughs> I couldn't. You know why? Because I can't even say his name out loud anymore. Well, also, we have already mentioned him. I mean, it's always yeah. worth bringing it up. But, yeah, yeah. you know, going forward well, at all times. That was the big, that was the one that broke him. Yeah. And yeah, broke all of us, too. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> broke yeah. the planet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, obviously, Van Halen with Van Halen 3. Boo. Ooh. And I love Van Hagar. I was actually really interested to see what they can cook up. And they just, boy, did they just take a shit and call it an album. Mm-hmm. It is just bad. And apparently, they actually did work on a bunch of material for the follow up before they finally yes. realized this is not working. Okay. Let's pull the plug. <laughs> we need to stop. And that stuff has never come out. It's never seen the light of day. And nor um, will it. No, I don't think it Fingers ever will. Uh, Michael Anthony has said that he really dug it. Um, Gary Sharon has said he would love for people to hear it. It's just never going to happen. Well, they, they, we, there's a bunch of stuff in the Van Halen vaults. So I don't know if it's ever going to get released. And people, I think, unfortunately, are, are sitting around with the impression that there must be some gems in there. There's got to be magic in there. Uh, very, very doubtful. You no. might find one or two songs in there that are like, oh, this is great that this is finally yeah. out, but everything there's else probably is not even a whole be... album. The best they're probably going to be able to do is to, is to go back to their Club Days recordings and clean those up probably. and put some of that stuff out. That's probably... That would be good. That's probably the best they could possibly do. Probably, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I mean, if if they put out an entire album of Vault stuff, I don't think that it would be... I think you'd be really scraping the barrel, and I think you'd have instrumental jams with nothing, right. you know, unfinished stuff. But that's the thing. I think Eddie's stuff, he has tapes and tapes and tapes, but they aren't complete pieces. They're right. just bits. They're song stuff. ideas and, yeah. and riffs and stuff like that. They would yeah. re- like recycle and turn into other things. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, I... I'm waiting for that 20 minute Ice Cream Man remix. That's what you, that's what we all need. That's what I want. Well, my actual <laughs> yeah, it's called, it's called uh, Stay Frosty. Well, stay fr- it's called Stay, stay frosty. frosty. Yeah. That's anyway. not yeah. I yeah. Didn't like anyway, that. sorry. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I did not like Stay Frosty. No, neither did I. I like that album, but I do not like that song. Uh, my actual worst of the year, and I was gonna go with Van Halen three. I actually was, and and Paul actually hit me up the other day and says, "I'm willing to bet we have the same worst of," and we almost did, man. It was yeah. this close. But I just couldn't resist swinging at the low-hanging fruit, and that would be Vanilla Ice with Hard to Swallow, his new metal album. You know, well, you know what though? Actually, and you metal? N- yeah, and you metal. metal. No, no, but actually, you are correct because that is far worse than the band. Oh, album. <laughs> infinitely worse. Yeah. I mean, that technically does need to be the worst. Yeah. 
And yeah, they paired him up with I think Ross Robinson is the guy's name, the producer that worked with like Corn and all that. Oh bullshit. God! Well, yeah, of course. Yeah, so they're like, Corn. let's see if we do that. And there's like he does a version of Ice Ice Baby on here, but like new right. metal. And he's like Ice Ice Baby, like that kind of shit. <laughs> yeah, and it's yeah. Oh dear. Yeah, uh, yeah, that yeah. happened. That's. That's how 1998, 1998 was. <laughs> you, 1998 could not have gotten more 1998 than it did. Right there. Well, if we do, uh, on our wrap-up episode for the series, if we do one of our lists like we did the last wrap-up for the singles, <sighs> the worst of the worst from all the lists, that's so bad, I could see that making the worst this of the worst. This easily could. Yeah, 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 I mean, this year, and this is in a year that's so bad. This year... The year itself is basically walking around with uh, those Jinkos uh, and, and a <laughs> fucking bad kids. and a bad goatee. Yes, with some stolen ICP records in its pockets. Wallet chain. When a wallet chain. That's the year is walking around like that. Yes. So yeah, that's that's what I got for you. It's just yeah. And well, speaking of the Donnas, one of their great lines from one of their songs, "I knew you were lame by your wallet chain." <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> that's funny. yeah. Nice. Well put. Yes. I... Um, anyway, so uh, that's, that's let's take a little break here, okay. and then we will come back and and and, and go out. All right. What's this? Don't eat it. It looks fabulous. Don't eat it. Oh, that chocolate. Don't eat it. Mm. Look, look, less fat. Okay, so eat it. Three Musketeers, rich milk, chocolate, fluffy nougat, less fat. So how about a little company here? Ask and you shall receive. Big on chocolate? Not on fat. All right. All right. Okay, yeah, yeah. so... All right, that's 1998. We got through it, huh? All right. Hard um, to believe. But, well, I, well, we have to go, but I just realized, I just thought of something. Ooh, what do Wait you got? a minute. I what? thought of something. What Wait is it? Wait a minute. Vintage, Vintage photo, photo time! time! All right, so this is Crystal and her sister Addie in 1998. Crystal writes, A self-portrait of me and my sister Addie. We had on hats. I think this was in the house we grew up in in Allentown. And here I am in 1998 looking out my bedroom window. The window swung open like a door leading out to a balcony, which is what I'm looking over here. Now, if you look to the right of me, you can see my record collection, which that's most of what I had at the time. Just those three rows are the A's through the R's. And if you look down towards the bottom, you can see the corner of the Red Cross Show World album that I just showed in the 1997 episode. It's the same copy. Now, around the same time, I recorded my first solo album, Bandmaster Flash, on a cassette four track, and then I initially kind of put it out as a cassette thing. About a year or so later, I was able to put it on a CD, and this is the photo that I used for the back of the jewel case. And this is Tommy in 1998, and he writes, And this would be my first actual real band. Brent on the left on guitar, me on bass, and bleed white pants, Jake center on drums and being a complete piece of shit, Chris second from right on guitar, RIP, and my cousin Frankie on the right on lead vocals. Sweet Jesus, we were bad. Brent wanted to do politically charged old school punk. I wanted to play Ramones style songs at double speed. Chris wanted us to be a ska band. Frankie just whined a bunch of juvenile sexist nonsense. And Jake wanted to take drugs. We were initially called Short Bus, which I can proudly say was not my idea. We eventually changed the name to Next in Line. We kicked out Chris because the musical differences were just too severe. Then Frankie bailed because he saw a shiny object. I became the lead singer by default. I eventually bailed as well because Brent and Jake were just not good people. We did cut a record which came out on cassette only, and I still have the master tapes. No, you can't hear it. Okay, well, that is Crystal and me and Tommy in 1998. <laughs> yeah, so that was us in 1998. <laughs> Were we adorable? Yeah, right? The very best. Right? Yeah. Okay, everybody, thank you for watching these, and thank you for going through the more difficult years as you are now doing. And uh, if you stick through us, stick with us through the upcoming episodes. You are the champions, my friend. Yes. Um, but I don't know. I think there's going to be some good stuff coming up. I know. Is there? For, for me. Oh, well, yeah, for me, there'll be yeah. some good stuff. Yeah. Very doubtful. Uh. Dark days are ahead, people. Uh. The end is nigh. The <laughs> end, end is, is nigh. nigh. <laughs> but, you know, don't uh, completely give up. Uh, tell your friends and leave comments. Because, again, that's one of the best parts about watching this show after Paul posts it is seeing your list. Your, our lists and our comments. Our and, and your comments. Right. And you better subscribe. Yeah. But if you do... Click the little bell because the bell. you want notifications. Yeah. And be sure to like, too. Like actually really helps. That's a really easy way to help us yeah, out if you like. Click. Like it. There you go. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. All right. Well, 
come back next week because we are going to be discussing the banner year. Far better than the entire musical output of the year it's named after. Anyway. All right. See you later. Bye. Hey, welcome back to the Atomic Jones Show. That was the Buona Devils. The video for uh, Mutual Combat. And uh, yeah, anyway, so as we still, so cut, take two. Welcome back to the Atomic Jones Show. That was the Buona Devils that we showed you there. It was uh, Mutual Combat. And uh, as we so clearly stated before, we're going to go to the Cactus Club tonight to see Mr. T Experience and the Donnas. And uh, we're actually still kind of in a rush, but we wanted to get a couple things across to you before we took off. Mm -hmm. uh, like if there's a little box I could put my foot on or something, that would be great. But okay. Possibly. Oh, we're taping. Oh, are we taping? Well, we'll do that for the next episode. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll do that for the next episode. I'm okay. with it. Oh, no. Uh -oh. I taping. Guess. Can you believe it? I can fit tape inside on, that thing. I know. I know. Amazing. It just rolls. It's just it rolls. amazing. Modern technology. I have. Man. I see my even my phone is retro. It has tape in it. Yeah, I don't know if you guys realize that as it should be is entirely analog. <laughs> yeah. Even my phone is retro. Yep. Yeah. Come on, man. We track so, these things to tape. Yeah. Right. We do. Okay. Three, two. Well, all, all right. right.